What's up my nerds? In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, I'll be ranking all of the 19 daggers available to the Thief vocation. I won't be diving into too much detail around the damage output calculations, as doing so will be boring as f Suffice to say, I did put a little bit of thought into it. Now sit back, relax, and let's get nerdy. Unsurprisingly, at the bottom of the rankings is Criteria, the Thief's starting equipment. Described as nimble daggers used far and wide, light and wieldy, and they comfortably fit within any palm. If you did manage to lose yours somehow and you're looking for a new set, you can always visit the Border Watch Outpost. In 18th place are the Throat Cutters, which are forged with a slit down the middle, Durable and wieldy, they keep their edge even as blade and bone would seek to dull them. In order to get your hands on the throat cutters, all you need to do is visit Roderick Smithy in Wentworth or Ruins Apothecary. In 17th place are the pre-order bonus Superior Criteria, which have been treated with a fine coat of gilt, honed to a sharper edge than the standard blades. They are prized among thieves for their efficacy in battle. In at number 16 are the stilettos, which have been crafted to deliver armored foes their end. The blades are flat and their points are sharp, the better to seek out gaps in mail or plate. The stilettos can be found within a chest in Time Worn Shaft, as well as purchased from Roderick Smithy and Wentworth and Chandler's General Store in Half Village. In 15th place is Signs of Valor, which are ancient daggers inscribed with a unique design. Once used as spear tips, records tell of their employment in ancient rites. Signs of Valor can only be obtained by visiting the Nameless Apothecary in the Nameless Village. In at number 14 are the Pelt Flayers, described as daggers of crude make, however known to carve through the pelts of wolves with exceptional ease. Pelt Flayers are the equipment you will be provided if you didn't start Dragon's Dogma 2 as a thief, however can also be obtained by looting special chests after completing the obstacle course in the Nameless Village, as well as inside a waterfall cave above the Chimera after defeating it. And of course, if all else fails, you can always just go and buy it at Chandler's General Store in Har Village or Dudley in Malv. Next up in the 13th spot are the Snag Daggers, which boasts a defined design but cruel purpose. Their flare tips rend flesh and bone as they exit their victims. The Snag Dagger set can only be obtained from Roderick Smithy in Vernworth. Next up in 12th place overall are the Helmbert Daggers, which are daggers that once served as the blades atop Helmbert pole arms, before they were removed and refashioned. They are known to be incredibly versatile when wielded by practiced hands. The Helmbert daggers can be found within a special chest within the derelict mine. However, if you are for some reason unable to locate these there, you can also just go and buy them at Celeste Smithy in the Checkpoint Rest Town. In at number 11 are the Bolts from the Blue. The Bolts from the Blue dagger set were uncovered within a Shrine of Elb. Once the crowns of longer weapons, they were reforged as daggers and given a lightning enchantment, and can only be found via exploration within the Windworn Gully Cave. Breaking into the top 10 are the Bardich Daggers, which are a pair of fearsome daggers in the shape of a waning moon. The blades were severed from pole arms for quicker handling, and are especially deadly against humanoid foes. The Bardich Daggers can be found via exploration within a chest in the Rocky Crevasse, but can also be purchased from Celeste Smithy at the Checkpoint Rest Town, as well as from the Nameless Apothecary in the Nameless Village. 
Sitting perfectly in the middle in ninth place are the Batali Biters. As the name would suggest, the Batali Biters can frequently be found within Batal. They are light and wieldy, and their lethality is only restricted by the wielder's imagination. You can only find the Batali Biters at Arwen's Armory in Bak Batal. In 8th place is the Lizard Skin Crafted Spite Dagger Set. These Spite Daggers are described as being fashioned from Saurian skin, bone and fang, with every bite of its blade increasing the chances of inflicting the blighted condition. So if stabbing your enemies and watching their health bars grow ever smaller is your thing, visit Celeste Smithy in the Respawn Checktown or Arwen's Arms in Buck Patal to get your hands on the Spite Dagger Set. In 7th place overall are the Dowsing Spikes, with their hilts meant to recall snakes on the hunt. They emit a glow whenever treasure is near, and therefore excels in both the combat and exploration pillars of play. The only way of obtaining the Dowsing Spikes is by obtaining and trading in 30 Seeker Tokens at the Vocation Guild. In at number 6 are the Divine Razors which are imbued with a font of immense power that courses through the wielder on the field of battle, emboldening and exhilarating them. And in order to get your hands on the Divine Razors, you'll have to visit Arwen's Arms in Bak Patal. The first entry in the top 5 are the Crimson Teeth Daggers. Eerie daggers bearing a skeletal motif, they are known to have been employed in arcane rituals by practitioners of the dark magics. The Crimson Teeth Dagger Set cannot be bought from any smithy or armory and can only be found by exploration, so make sure you thoroughly search each and every chest in the Salbatal Cavern. In at number 4 are the Fremay Blades, with these daggers having been reforged from a pair of pole arms that once housed a demonic presence, and are unparalleled tools in the art of stabbing. The devilish Fremay Blades can be obtained within the Volcanic Island Armory in the Volcanic Island Camp, as well as Gustav after completing Put a Spring in Thy Step. You can also pick this up from Broker Smithy in Buck Patel after completing the quest Steel Resolved Blazing Forge. Or within the endgame, it will be available at Roderick's, Grisha's, Celeste's and Arwen's Arms. Making its way onto the podium in third place are the Dragon's Vein. And these daggers are worthy of their namesake. Facing them is akin to having the dragon's own claws at your neck. The Dragon's Vein daggers are an endgame item and can only be bought from the Wayside Shrine by forking over 110 Worm Life Crystals. One place shy of taking out gold for itself are the Frosted Edges. These daggers were forged from a rare ore found within an iceberg. Coated in a thin layer of frost, the blades bear a perpetual ice enchantment. The only way that you can get your hands on the Frosted Edge Daggers is by exploring and finding a chest containing them within the Coral Snake's hideout. And in the first place, and I think I might just get zero shit for this, is Heaven's Key. Of course, Heaven's Key Daggers are infused with divine might through arcane means, and it is said that their holy enchantment will never fade. The Heaven's Key Dagger Set will become available for purchase at all weapon vendors after you get to the Unmoored World. This includes Roderick's, Grisha's, Celeste's, Arwen's and Brock's Smithy. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please remember to leave me a like, subscribe to the channel for more Dragon's Dogma 2 and other RPG content, and until I see you again, stay nerdy.